Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place as you listen to The Bright Side every day. You are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. Our number today and every day on the Bright Side is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we especially love hearing those, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, or even better, if you want to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team and start yourself a Longevity business, make some money helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, please call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866 735 2470. That's 866 735 2470. You can also purchase products and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our retinol 5% gel made with. 5% retinol as well as vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, surfactants, emulsifiers, water, propylene glycol, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. That's truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Also have a couple new products up at brightsidehealth.com. Have some coconut powder, have a vegan protein powder, and a hemp salve. These are three new products. I'm always looking for good products that you can't get anywhere else, and these are three new products that I found. We put them up at brightsidehealth.com earlier this week. That's brightsidehealth.com. Of course, you'll find Jordan Rubin's bone broth protein at brightsidehealth.com and our Pure Hemp Botanicals CBD oil, which so many folks are benefiting from, especially if you're dealing with anxiety or chronic pain. You want to know about CBD, cannabidiol oil. It's organic, and you'll find it at brightsidehealth.com. Of course, no preservatives in there either. Brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We are talking about connective tissue. We're talking fibromyalgia. And yesterday we started talking about the relationship of estrogen to fibromyalgia, really the relationship of the hormone estrogen to all health or the lack thereof. As we said, estrogen is a growth substance. It makes fibers grow. It makes connective tissue grow. It's also a stress management hormone. This is very important. We don't often think of this as a stress, uh, estrogen as a stress management hormone. If you're on estrogen replacement therapy, the doctor's giving you a stress hormone. Estrogen's associated with anxiety, it's associated with uh, insomnia, it's associated with infertility, in addition to being a growth substance. It's also uh, associated with the movement of fluids. It's a water retention hormone. If you're holding on to fluids, if you feel the burden of water weight, you can rest assured you are dealing with the accumulation or an imbalance in estrogen and toxic estrogens. We will talk later on in this program or maybe in our next Bright Side episode about toxic estrogens. Toxic estrogens are really breakdown products, i.e. metabolites of estrogen. A metabolite is a breakdown product. Estrogen's a blood clotting hormone. Blood clotting is a type of fibrosis. Blood clotting is a type of inflammation of the blood. 
And most significantly, estrogen is a pro-inflammatory hormone. It's a baby-making hormone. Think about it. Baby-making is actually a type of inflammation. It's a type of growth. It's, it requires fluids. It requires cell division. So estrogen is primarily a baby-making hormone, but it's related to its ability to cause the movement and the growth of cells. Now, estrogen is not a conception hormone. It's not going to, it's a baby making hormone. I should say a baby growing hormone. It won't help you conceive a baby. In fact, estrogen is actually a, a, a conception suppression hormone. It shuts off uh, conception. After all, once you're making a baby, you're not supposed to conceive a second one. So when I say estrogen is a baby making hormone, I don't mean it's a baby conceiving hormone. Rather, it's a baby growing hormone or a fetal growing, a fetal growth hormone. And of course, estrogen is associated with a whole bunch of health challenges, including fibromyalgia, fibrosis, sclerosis, mood disorders, weight issues, and most importantly, the stress response. Even though your doctor probably has not told you this, it is well recognized by those in the know that estrogen is a stress hormone. From WebMD, no friend of alternative medicine, certainly, from WebMD headline, estrogen is involved in the stress response. Quote, new research from Yale University may help explain why women are twice as likely as men to suffer from stress-related mental illnesses such as anxiety and depression. Animal studies show that high levels of the female sex hormone estrogen affect the brain's ability to deal with stress. Estrogen was found to amplify the stress response in areas of the brain most closely identified with depression and other stress-related mental illness, unquote. That is from WebMD. From the Journal of Clinical Investigation, June 1993, evidence of direct estrogenic regulation of stress hormone, I CRH hormone, that's called corticotropin releasing hormone, but you don't have to know that, just stress hormone, gene expression. This is from a very well-respected peer-reviewed journal, of the, the Journal of Clinical Investigation. Researchers concluded that, quote, immune and inflammatory reaction is greater in female than in male animals and humans, unquote. And further, estrogen plays a, quote, central role, unquote, in the immune and inflammatory response associated with stress. Do you ladies really want a hormone? You really want to take estrogen? It's a stress hormone. It's an inflammatory hormone, as we'll find out in a little bit. It's also a cancer-causing hormone. Keep in mind, with all of this stuff about estrogen, with all of this evidence and biochemical relevance of estrogen to stress and inflammation and cancer, women are still being dosed regularly with this potentially toxic substance. I got a text yesterday from a gal in Texas. She writes, I am on, I am on some bioidentical drugs from compounding pharmacy. Well, now I am retaining water because of estrogen levels. Nine pounds gained around the belly. This is in two weeks. I feel bloated and swollen and my acne has gotten worse. My question is, do you know of a natural diuretic or a pharmaceutical diuretic to release water in tension? Wanted to ask you and have some idea before calling the doctor, unquote. Now you see what she's doing here. This gal is, uh, has been prescribed estrogen, which is an inflammatory hormone. It's a water, water retention hormone. She's also, by the way, I talked to her, she's also having problems with anxiety and insomnia. So she gets this, uh, this estrogen replacement therapy. She gains water weight. Now she wants a diuretic to counteract the effects of her estrogen. This is, this is the kind of thinking. I'm not beating this lady up. I'm just saying this is the kind of thinking we have. And we're encouraged to think this way by the pharmacomedical model that at the end of the day could give a rat's you-know-what about us as individuals. She wants a diuretic. She wants a, another drug to take care of the side effects from the first drug. So I told her, instead of a diuretic, maybe you should be using, or, uh, maybe you should be using substances to counteract your estrogen or not even, or even getting off your estrogen. Work on estrogen clearance. We're going to talk a lot about estrogen clearance in the coming days. To me, estrogen clearance is one of the most important subjects for anyone dealing with the effects of ex excess estrogen or anyone who is on HRT. You have to support estrogen clearance, estrogen elimination, estrogen detoxification, which largely occurs through the intestine and through bowel movements. Constipation is a recipe for disaster if you are on HRT. Hormone replacement therapy, that is. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We shall return with more good health information right after this. Okay, we are...
far back on the bright side. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or business or anything we're speaking about here today, if you're on medication, you want to wean yourself off the meds, or if you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. And we do have lines open for you. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, all vitamin C enriched, all packed with vitamin C, and our retinol 5% gel has got the bonus of retinol in there. You're getting retinol and vitamin C together in our transdermal delivery matrix, and that's it. That's our retinol 5% gel. It's just our transdermal delivery matrix. Uh, to increase the penetration or improve the penetration of the active ingredients through the surface of the skin. Vitamin A in the retinol form and vitamin C in its fat-soluble form, retinol 5% gel. No preservatives, fragrance, silicon, wax, oil, surfactant, emulsifier, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Okay. So I get this letter yesterday, she's a gal, she's gaining water weight, she's on hormone replacement therapy, uh, a specific type of, of estrogen, which we'll talk about here in a second. I told her, first of all, you might want to consider getting off the estrogen. You know, a lot of times hot flashes and the symptoms associated with, with menopause that we take estrogen for are really progesterone issues. If you are considering hormone replacement therapy, I would highly, highly recommend that you check out progesterone first. Progesterone is non-toxic. Progesterone is a, is a uh, uh, estrogen balancing substance. Progesterone is a calming agent, unlike estrogen, which is an anxiety-inducing and stress-inducing agent. And a lot of times the hot flashes and the, the, the unpleasant symptoms associated with, with menopause are really caused by a lack of progesterone, not a lack of estrogen. So I told this gal, first thing she might want to consider is getting off the estrogen. If she doesn't want to get off the estrogen, use estrogen clearing strategies, which we'll talk about here in a minute, or maybe later on, uh, maybe on an, uh, our next Bright Side episode. Estro but for now, just know that clearing out estrogen with fiber is incredibly valuable if you are on HRT. If you're on HRT, you should be prescribed fiber with it, or at least do your own fiber. Grind your flax seeds up. Flax seeds, by the way, have some estrogenic properties on their own. So just using flax seeds may help, but if you are on HRT, grind up flax seeds every day, put them in some unsweetened chocolate almond milk or even just straight water. I like it in almond milk, it's a delicious pudding, but whatever. Drink down uh, maybe a tablespoonful or a couple tablespoons full of fiber. If you never, haven't used a lot of fiber before, go slowly because it can cause a little bit of GI distress when you first start using it. But Fiber not only magnetically attracts estrogen and chelates it out of the body, but it also helps improve bowel movements. And estrogen is eliminated through the bowel. If you're constipated on HRT, this is a recipe for disaster. Because remember, HRT, or, or estrogen I should say, causes the buildup of breakdown or metabolite products which are associated definitively with cancer as well as other health, as other health challenges. Now, what I'm, about to, what I'm about to say here is probably the most important idea when it comes to estrogen and how to handle estrogen. So check this out. Listen up. There is no such thing as estrogen. It's a word. There's no chemical called estrogen. There's no actual chemical that you can refer to as estrogen because estrogen is a family. It's a family of 20 plus substances, some of which are toxic metabolites. Now you have three main types of estrogen children in the estrogen family. They're called E1, E2, and E3, or more technically, estradiol, estrone, and estriol. Estrone is E1. Estrone has the word one in there, so that's E1. Estradiol, di meaning two, is E2. And estriol has the, has the little piece tri in there, and that's considered to be E3. Estradiol is the major estrogen of non-pregnant women. It's produced in the ovaries. It's the most potent of the estrogen. If you're looking for estrogen effects, for better or for worse, for better because estradiol is the estrogen that you'll use if you're on hormone replacement therapy, for worse, this is the estrogen that's associated with cancer. It's considered to be the most powerful estrogen. It's the estrogen that is associated with youth and fertility and femininity. It's the main drug or pharmaceutical estrogen. And it's considered to be the most active in the sense that it's the one that performs the widest range, 
the widest spectrum of estrogenic effects. This is the estrogen, the form of estrogen, estradiol is, that actually goes into our tissues and enters into the cells or docks into the cells, into the cell receptors and causes the estrogen effects. It's made in the ovaries, it's also made in the adrenal glands. This is really important. Estrogen is made in the adrenal glands. Remember, it's a stress type of hormone. And it's made in the adrenal glands. Estradiol, I should say, is made in the adrenal glands. And this is why menopausal women, if you're interested in bumping up your estrogen levels naturally, and you don't want to go on hormone replacement therapy, it's critical that you focus on adrenal health. And keeping in mind, the adrenal gland is the jumping off point, the adrenal thyroid complex is the jumping off point for all other diseases. Working on the adrenal glands is not just important for menopause, it's not just important for keeping your estrogen levels high or estrogen levels where they should be, estro estradiol levels where they should be, but it's also important for dealing with all kinds of chronic degenerative illnesses. The more adrenal stress we are under from foods, digestive toxicity, sugar, low oxygen levels, psychological reasons, emotional and mental reasons, the more our adrenal stress hormones, that is cortisol is being manufactured in the adrenal glands, the less resources, raw materials we will have available to make estrogen and progesterone for that matter. And all, uh, you know, the sex hormones are made, the reproductive hormones are made in the adrenal glands. And as a woman ages, Instead of the estradiol being manufactured in the ovaries, it now shifts over and it gets manufactured in the adrenal glands. And one of the reasons why women get hot flashes and anxiety and insomnia is because the adrenal glands are cranking out, trying to keep going with estrogen and with cortisol and with, with, uh, with progesterone. Working on your adrenal glands is the way you want to handle menopausal symptoms. And there's lots of ways to do that. If you are dealing with menopause and you're also dealing with adrenal stress, now the raw materials for making estrogen, specifically cholesterol and essential fats, are going to be redirected to making cortisol and you will have less available to make your estrogen. So what you want to do if you're dealing with menopausal symptoms is work on the adrenal glands. You can use nutrients for the adrenal glands. Iodine is critical for adrenal health. Vitamin C is critical for adrenal health. I am absolutely in love with pantothenic acid, which is one of the most underappreciated of all the vitamins, all the B vitamins and all the vitamins in general. And it is a major adrenal nutrient, vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. All women who are dealing with menopausal symptoms, all women of menopausal age should be on vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. It's a key player in my blemish repair complex because vitamin B5, pantothenic acid can help people who are dealing with oily skin, which is a sign of adrenal stress. Vitamin B5 is a critical player in turning fats into hormones. All our steroid hormones ultimately arise from fats. And vitamin B5 is a major player in the conversion of fats into hormones and helping the body utilize fats. Zinc is important for the adrenal glands. Vitamin B12 is important for the adrenal glands. You can get something called adrenal extract, which is also, uh, also can be helpful. Adrenal gland extract, which can also be helpful for adrenal health. This is for all women of menopausal age, all women dealing with menopausal issues. If you're dealing with adrenal acne, if you're dealing with adrenal stress, pretty much all of us can benefit by focusing on adrenal health. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got lines open, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. Right side. Got lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you tried to call in the past and got the busy signal, now's the time to get on board. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you in just a moment. Our number is 844-236-6010. Got a couple of stories I want to get to, and then we'll get your calls here. Another day, another article on intestinal bacteria and the microbiome. I am telling you, folks. I've been talking about the microbiome now since I first heard about it in pharmacy school, but over the last 10 years, five years, last year, it is unbelievable the amount of information that we're accumulating about the importance of microbiome health. Microbiome is the universe of bacteria that live in our gut. They help make vitamins. They help detoxify fats. They fight cancer. They communicate to the liver. They help us process our foods. 
They are important for brain health. They are just so unbelievably, unbelievably important. And more and more, we're seeing that there's links between health issues that you would never believe are related to gut bacteria and the health of these hundred trillion little critters that live in our gut. This is an article that uh, just got here from, uh, this is from Boulder actually, University of Colorado at Boulder. Gut microbes and poor artery health. Researchers probe a possible link. Scientific evidence that the assortment of gut microbes in humans influence different, influences different and critical aspects of health is piling up. Now researchers believe in addition to obesity and anxiety and depression and autism and cancer and of course gastrointestinal diseases, there's now a new possibility of a link between health and the microbiome. It turns out that researchers at the University of Colorado in Boulder recently reported preliminary evidence that changes in gut microbiota, that is gut bacteria, contribute to poor artery health associated with aging. Researchers quote, uh, researchers concluded, quote, this condition is worse by eating a Western diet high in fat and sugars and low in fiber, unquote. What they might add is that uh, the Western diet that's filled with antibiotic-laden meat and dairy and poultry also is a factor. What they might also add is that chlorinated water has got to have an awful, uh, an awful impact on gut, the gut microbiome. Chlorine kills things. We got to come up with another way to purify the water because chlorine is a toxic substance that not only, not only is it toxic, but it kills the microbiome. Fluoride does the same thing. Preservatives in foods do the same thing. It may even be that preservatives in skincare products can do the same thing because we know that those preservatives, specifically parabens, can eventually enter into the bloodstream. That's one of the reasons why I don't use preservatives in my Truth Skin Health products. From science translational medicine, intestinal bacteria alter gut and brain function. Research from McMaster University has found that bacteria in the gut impacts both intestinal and behavioral symptoms in patients suffering from IBS. This new study, which was published in Science Translational Medicine and published yesterday, found that IBS, which is the most common GI disorder in the world, affects the large intestine and affects gut bacteria in the intestine and ultimately can affect brain health from the University of Chicago, University of Illinois at Chicago. Scientists stimulate the immune system to stop cancer growth. I love this because what this tells us is the immune system fights cancer. Do you know you have cancer killing cells? They're called, they're called uh, uh, killer cells. Killer, that's what they're called actually, is killer cells. These killer cells are designed to kill cancer among other things. When we have cancer, this represents an aberration in the immune system. Something has suppressed the, the immune system's ability to take care of the cancer. Cancer, should, uh, cancer does occur relatively rarely, even though it seems like the incidence of cancer is increasing. In 1971, when this war on cancer was initiated by President, then President Nixon, there were about 600,000 cases of cancer diagnosed. Today, there's 1.6 million cases of cancer diagnosed every year. The immune system is supposed to take care of cancer. If you have, God forbid, been diagnosed with cancer, rest assured you have an immune system that has been burdened with sugar, with stress, emotional stress, mental stress, with drugs themselves can act as an immune, uh, act as a burden on the immune system and the, and the detoxification system as well. Sildenafil, that's Viagra, attenuates the fibrotic phenotype, that's fibrosis basically, in the skin with uh, patients who have systemic sclerosis, scleroderma. Now you can take Viagra for your systemic fibrosis, or at least your skin systemic fibrosis. I'm not sure if I like that idea, but that's kind of interesting. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Alaska and welcome our friend Elaine to the bright side. Good morning, Elaine. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How's it going today? Great. Your show is, it really, I wish it was continuing education for <laughs> Therapy. I don't want so, it to be, I want it to be entertaining though, not just strictly a lecture. I hope it's entertaining. Oh, very much so. Yeah, no, good. it's great. My patients love it. And oh, good. Actually, I'm calling concerning a patient. She okay. is 65 and um, is on Synthroid, and then she was put on um, Crestor for cholesterol. Didn't like how it made her feel, didn't like paying $200 a pill, whatever it was. Anyway, so she took herself off of it a off, couple of months. Off the Crestor? Yeah, without her doctor's approval. 
And, and the thyroid too? Not the thyroid med. I okay, think she just took herself off the Crest door. Yeah, just off the crest. I love how you said that, though, without her doctor's approval. We have this, like, you know, and I don't, I'm not being mean or anything or picking on you, but it's just kind of interesting how we think. Sometimes people will say, my doctor ordered me, and you see these commercials where they say, check with your doctor, you got to check with your doctor. We get this, we have this meme, this belief system, this mind virus in the culture that the doctor is the priest, or the doctor is God, or the doctor is daddy. You might as well say, my daddy told me, or check with your daddy, or my daddy ordered me, or I've stopped those drugs without informing my daddy. So we can just substitute the word daddy for doctor. It's a daddy system. Your doctor's not your daddy, folks. And Elaine, I know you know that. Anyway, what were you going to ask me? Um, but she noticed within maybe four or six weeks of going, getting off the crystal, now she's she's never had hot flashes. So now she's really struggling. They're not, it's not related to getting off the crest door. In fact, oh, okay. how, do, how do you, uh, what is the raw material for the, and I know you know this, I'm pretty sure you know this, what's the raw material for the production of estrogen as well as progesterone, the basic raw material? Gosh, do you know? oh, that's back in You do. When I tell you, you'll know. It's cholesterol. Uh, cholesterol. Um, Okay. Cholesterol. Yeah, That's cholesterol right. Cholesterol is the raw material for making all your steroid hormones. So when your boneheaded medical professional puts you on Crestor, and I say boneheaded with a capital B because it's only a boneheaded medical professional who's bought the drug company Kool-Aid that would dispense this drug. When your boneheaded medical professional puts you on Crestor, now your body doesn't make cholesterol, right? Cholesterol is arguably the single most important and multifunctional chemical in the body. And to suppress its production is stupidity of the highest degree, but especially if you're menopausal. Because now, in addition to your body not being able to make estrogen as effectively because of menopause, now you've just cut off the raw material for making estrogen, as well as progesterone, as well as cortisol, as well as vitamin D, as well as a whole slew. Of, of important biochemicals, which are not only derivatives of estrogen or of cholesterol, but are actually forms of cholesterol. Estrogen is actually a type of cholesterol. Vitamin D is actually a type of cholesterol. Progesterone and testosterone are types of cholesterol. Cortisol is a type of cholesterol. And when you take Crestor, now you're going to suppress all of those. And if you're already menopausal, this is stupidity of the highest degree. And quote me on it. All right, Elaine, I'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'll give you some ideas for dealing with hot flashes. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about uh, the various forms of estrogen, E1, E2, and E3. If you're thinking about hormone replacement therapy, this is something that you want to know about. I'm not a big believer in hormone replacement therapy. If you're going to do hormone replacement therapy, I'm going progesterone. I'm not a woman, of course, and I'm not going to have to deal with it, but I would highly recommend if you're a woman and you're thinking about HRT, you try progesterone first. We're talking to uh, Elaine. By the way, we have lines open, 844-236-6010. Elaine, are you there, ma'am? Yes, I am. Okay, so Crestor, stopping or suppressing the production of cholesterol when you're menopausal is just asinine, just idiotic. You need more cholesterol, not less cholesterol. The idea of using cholesterol or cholesterol-lowering drugs to, to prevent heart attacks is also fallacious. In any case, here's what you're, uh, she's dealing with uh, hot flashes, insomnia, anxiety, all those kinds of things, I assume? Uh, mainly, yeah, the hot flashes, um, and then she is taking Beyond Tangy Tangerine and like pomegranate juice, I think. Beyond Tangy Tangerine and pomegranate juice for the estri- for the, to support her estrogen? I think just for kind of general health, she's just kind of started Interesting. Taking- yeah. You know, pomegranates have always been associated with fertility. Do you know that? Did you know that? Yes. Have you seen Have you seen the inside of a pomegranate? All the seeds. Uh huh. That's why they're associated with fertility. That's called the law of similars in herbalism. They call it the law of similars. When when a fruit or a plant or or a vegetable or, or an herb looks like something, the law of similars says that it's going to actually do something related to that function right. in the body. So so per, we find that uh, pomegranates are associated with fertility. In any case, if she She's got hot flashes, anxiety, insomnia, mood changes, all, all the unpleasantness associated with menopause. What you're looking at is an amplified stress response. 
This is like a, a checklist of an overactive or hyperactive sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight nervous system. I mean, it, you don't even need to be a doctor. You don't you just don't need to understand a little basic chemistry or biochemistry. Hot flashes, insomnia, anxiety are a sign of the body in distress. They're a manifestation of the stress response. So you calm the body down. Estrogen doesn't calm the body down. Progesterone does. So first of all, she should be on progesterone or maybe pregnenolone. Get her on 100 milligrams of pregnenolone or uh, maybe 2% progesterone cream or progesterone capsules. Progesterone is the way to go if you're dealing with these things, in my opinion. You can also use relaxation strategies that we talk about here all the time, deep breathing, Mas uh, massage, Reiki, meditation, just calming the body down is very helpful for dealing with these kinds of symptoms, hot flashes, etc. Then using nutrients can be very important. We talked about all the adrenal gland nutrients that are important for, hot, for, for adrenal health, hot flashes being a manifestation of adrenal distress, using vitamin C, zinc, iodine, essential fats, vitamin B5, vitamin B12, all of these can be very helpful. Melatonin is a wonderfully underappreciated uh, hormone substance. It's a, you can buy it at a health food store. Maybe three to six milligrams of melatonin a night perhaps can help her. GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, can help with hot flashes, also with insomnia and jitteriness and mood, mood swings that are associated with menopause. The amino acid glycine, G-L-Y-C-I-N-E, that can help. I like uh, uh, magnesium. In fact, magnesium is one of the all-time great estrogen-supporting and estrogen-balancing minerals. All-time great, along with selenium. But ma magnesium is stupendously valuable for women who are going through menopause. Magnesium deficiency is very common. Magnesium is best uh, obtained in green leafy vegetables, but you can supplement with magnesium. I like magnesium glycinate, which is a combination of magnesium and glycine. Not only is it easy for the body to handle, but you also get the glycine, which, by the way, glycine is another one of those underappreciated nutrients. Not only does it have a calming effect, glycine has been used to treat seizure disorders, but glycine is also a very important connective tissue uh, amino acid. It's important for building collagen and bone and, and other, uh, the extracellular matrix and other versions of the connective tissue. So my magnesium glycinate can help. Vitamin E and vitamin A, we're going to talk about all these in the coming days. Vitamin E and vitamin A have wonderful estrogen balancing eff uh, effects. And keep in mind, you're always making a little bit of estrogen even as you get older. You're always going to make estrogen in body fat. And the more body fat you're carrying, the more estrogen you're going to be making. But progesterone, not so much. Progesterone is not made in body fat. And progesterone levels drop definitively. Estrogen levels drop, but, but nothing like progesterone levels. So using all of the relaxation strategies that we talk about, last but not least, sugar will jack up the adrenal glands. Sugar can cause all kinds of emotional and mental and anxiety, uh, anxiety issues and insomnia issues, and it is also associated with hot flashes. Keeping your sugar intake down is paramount for anybody dealing with any of, uh, any of, any unpleasant, of the unpleasantries that are associated with menopause. If you are going to be a, eating carb, carbs, refined carbs and sugars, um, make, sure that you, uh, make sure that you use chromium, vanadium, the B-complex, niacin, zinc, magnesium, fiber. All of these are great strategies to help the body process and eliminate sugar, glucose specifically. Did you always see the new Nutrition Facts label? Have you seen this yet? Oh, I can't wait. When did they come out? It's, I don't know if it either came out or is coming out. Um, I think the FDA is finalizing it, but it's going to have added sugars. Right now it only says the, the, uh, the uh, nutrition label just says sugar, but now it's going to have added sugars, which is very important because sometimes foods will have sugar in it, but you can't distinguish between added glucose, added sweetener, and the natural sugar, except now on the new label you'll see that. And you know what else on the new Nutrition Facts label you're going to see is serving size. A lot of times companies play games with serving sizes. So you'll get a bottle of juice, which is everybody drinks the whole bottle of juice, but they'll say it's got four serving sizes. And then when you read the nutrition facts, the nutrition facts will say something like 200 calories per serving size, but it's really 800 calories. Or it'll say something like 12 grams of sugar per serving size, but it's really 48 grams of sugar because everybody's drinking the whole bottle. So the new nutrition facts label will say, it looks very similar to the old one, but it, the, diff, the big difference that I saw anyway is it'll include a space for added sugars and it will include a space for 
uh, it will show serving size in big bold letters, in big black bold letters, which is very important. For now, if it's until the Nutrition Facts label comes out, and everybody should become a Nutrition Fact reader. Everybody should be an ingredient reader, in my opinion, especially in skincare. By the way, we should get to know ingredients in skincare. We should get to know ingredients and nutrition facts on foods. Uh, everybody, you need to pay attention to serving sizes because companies play games with the serving sizes, and this is the way they lower calories on the nutrition facts. This is the way they lower lower sugars on the nutrition facts. So you've got to pay attention to serving sizes. The new nutrition label will make it easier to do that. All right. What's anything else there, my dear? Thank you. And I'm just going to try to encourage her not to work seven days a week. I'm sure that has something. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Stress management. Yep. All right. God bless you, Elaine. Thanks Are for you? calling. Appreciate All right. it. All right. Uh, let's see. I've got Mike here. Mike in Texas just called in here. What's going on, Mike? Hey, um, doctor. Um, I have a friend that lives currently in New York. And she was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy, I think it is. Yep, that's and, a uh, sick heart. They have, def they have definitely given her a bad, you know, a sentence and, um, or whatever. And um, she... Uh, have they condemned her to death? Is that what they've done? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? They've condemned her. That's what the doctors yeah. do. They condemn yeah. you. Yeah. No, yeah. Listen, and, and how old she, is she? How old is she? She is probably, let's see, about 48, 49, oh my goodness. almost 50. Oh, she's, that's good news. It's bad news because she's so young and she should not be dealing with cardiomyopathy, which is basically heart muscle sickness, heart muscle, heart muscle pathology. She shouldn't be dealing with it, but she's young, so that's good news. Right away, get her on vitamin C. Absolutely. Positively. Remember, the heart is made of connective, is, is, uh, I don't say it's made of, but it, it's hung on a framework of connective tissue. When that connective tissue breaks down, everything else breaks down in the heart. So building connective tissue is probably the most important thing you could do for heart disease. Uh, um, vitamin C is your major connective tissue building vitamin. Vitamin C deficiencies are common. Get her on the BTT, which contains high doses of vitamin C and extra vitamin C as well. Also, consider glucosamine and cartilage containing products and hyaluronic acid, all of which will help her build connective tissue in the heart. And then make sure she's getting enough electrical nutrients. That is your electrolytes and your B vitamins, potassium, sodium, magnesium, calcium. You get those in the BTT and vegetable juices. She should be living on vegetable juice, in my opinion, as well as bone soup. Okay. If, she's a, if she's a sugar person, sugar destroys connective tissue. There's a major, major relationship. Probably there's no more definitive or clear-cut relationship between a, a lifestyle issue and heart disease than sugar, with the possible exception of cigarette smoke. But heart disease and, di uh, and diabetes, heart disease and dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar go hand in hand. So keeping her sugar intake down, I would be doing the ketogenic diet, which is a low carbohydrate, low calorie diet, uh, and also making sure she's getting enough protein um, and in addition to restricting her sugars and using nutrients that help her, pro her body process sugar, the Sweeties, the Ultimate Selenium, the Osteomag, and uh, also, of course, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the B vitamins, especially niacin and thiamine, B1 and B3. All right, that's all the time, Mike. We're, we're just out of time, my friend. If you can call back tomorrow, we'll finish up with you. Uh, tomorrow, we'll also finish up on estrogen, talk about the three different types of estrogen. Then we'll get into some of the ways that you can help support estrogen clearance and estrogen metabolism, estrogen processing. I'm pharmacist Ben. Please check out my website, truthtreatments.com, and our Truth Skin Health products, and sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team by calling 866-735-2470. I'm pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you later, folks. Bye for now.